I'm going to sit down here a sec. Right, this bork, I don't know if any of you are familiar with it. It's this. I've had this for years and I dug it out when I knew I wanted to get away for a couple of days with literally anywhere in mind, could have been north, south, wherever. Um, I dug this out because I thought, see if it gives me some inspiration. Anyway, this is probably, I don't know, seven year old or something. Anyway, it's well worth a buy, folks. It's an old one now, but it's well worth a buy if you uh, if you want some inspiration. Uh, so, where are we? Northern England, High Mile Tour. No, not that one. Buxton Loop, no, a bit further north than that. York Loop, no. Ambleside Loop, that's it. So, this is what we're going to do today. Kirkstone Pestle, that's where I am now. In fact, I'm probably up here somewhere now. So, we are... This is Kirkstone Pass. Is it? No, sorry. This is Kirkstone Pass, this is the beginning of it here. So we're going up there. Oh, 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 oh. I need to somehow transfer that into my sat nav, so I ain't got to keep stopping and pulling this out. Right, where are we? Let's have our location. Right, directions. Two. A5091. Oh, I've got loads to go, yeah. That's Hull's Water, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I've got loads to go up here, yeah, look, man. Ah, is that... Dockray, that's it. five in the morning and um, I'm going to go on a little impromptu trip to the Lake District. I only thought about this about 11 o'clock last night. Got a couple of days spare. There's only a few days left with the beautiful Honda VFR 800F. So I thought a couple of days spare, why not? Why not go up north and go to the Lake District? So yeah, it's quarter five in the morning. I'm going to do three hours, smack it right up to Ambleside and then uh, we'll start the day from there. Well, we're starting the day with coffee, but uh, as soon as the coffee's gone, I'm gone. Sit tight and join me. We'll see what we get up to. Yeah.
anywhere without that in the morning. Twenty past five in the morning. Took me a little bit longer to get ready than I thought, but it is uh, eleven degrees. I've got the Rishi suit on for the first time since summer, including liners. Good morning, folks, and welcome back. So, I've done the uh, shift up the motorway, and I'm now in the Lake District. Do you know, I've done all that route up the motorway, three hours, on a full tank of petrol. In fact, I'd lost a, I'd lost a digit off the top, and I'm still on the same tank, and I've been on flashing now. The petrol light's been on for 10 miles. I've only got 10 miles to my uh, to my digs, which is where I'm, I can't get into later, but this is where, where I'm going to start. I'm going to have a break and start from there, but uh, so even if I get to the digs and can't find a petrol station, I'll be right. here's one, here's one, here's one. Yes. Super. Yeah, so we're not flashing. Yeah, for 10 miles. Let's get across here. Lovely stuff. Impressed with the uh, fuel range. A nice full tank on. Uh, she's a full one. Oh. Number four. This pipe does sound nice. It's the standard one. It's just uh, in the way of that back wheel, so I'd, I would definitely be uh, looking to replace it with a short stubby. I'm going to get myself to my destination, which is 10 miles away, and then uh, start looking to get my route sorted. I'll have another coffee. I'm sat and have two my digs. Got a B&B booked for tonight. I think it's about 69 quid. No, 59 quid. Booked at about 11 o'clock last night. <laughs> it was a totally last minute plan this was, so I'm uh, looking forward to it. Observations on motorway on this bike. The pegs do feel a touch higher on this one to mine. I feel a, I feel a tiny bit a tiny bit more cramped on it than mine and the headlight thing I really really can't get over that I'm going to try and take uh, a picture in a bit a better picture on my uh, DSLR of the headlight pattern but in the meantime while I'm chatting to you now just have a look at this picture that I took off my iPhone the headlights look brilliant, they're super white, the design looks gorgeous, they look lovely to look at, but what they're designed for, lighting the road, it's very weird. You get a massive flood of it down in front, Im immediately in front of your front wheel, and then like a really thin line where your line of sight's going to be, but then nothing in between. Between, between the big floodlight at the front wheel and the line of sight, I've not heard anyone moaning about that, but I, for one, find it very strange. Another thing I've noticed as well, you know, you've got the uh, your heated grips are integrated a lot, which I think are really neat. And then when you switch them on, you can see on the dash, uh, let me change gear, might not be able to see so well now, but anyway, 
See on the dash it comes on. So you get an indicator showing you that the heaters are on and what level of heat you've selected. And you've got five settings, five being the hottest. And that's pretty cool as well because when I pulled up there to the petrol station, I'd adjusted my heating settings to number four. And then switching the bike back on, the heaters are off. Sorry, switching the bike off to fill up, then switching it back on, the heaters are default to off. So I've just gone to press it again to turn them back on and it's remembered my uh, my, my, no, my setting. So it's come straight back on at number four, which I think is pretty cool. But I do like how there's a indicator on the dash showing that the heaters are on. There's just one thing that I'd, I would really like to see on it. You know, it's a touring bike and we like to tour and a lot of the time when we're touring we're cruising. So why can't we have cruise control? Because our right hands need it. And as I was saying before, with the left switch gear, you, uh, you've got your big main beam switch that you don't need there. You don't need it to be there. So why can't we have that turning into some form of cruise control and put that switch integrated into your pass switch like the Suzuki bikes and then all you see all you have to do then is your forefinger flick it forward flick the pass switch forward which puts you onto main beam and I think that's brilliant and so natural so why can't we have that I'd like to see that that is your main beam switch flick forward and then this being turned into your cruise control you're welcome all right so we're just approaching Windermere Lake and uh, I'm only five miles from here well it's only eight o'clock in the morning and I've just arrived so I'm very glad that I uh, got out of bed early dragged my ass out of bed and got on the road I'd originally set my alarm for five but then I woke up at half four I just thought, so I did, I'll get up, so I went downstairs, made me coffee. I have to have my coffee in the morning, nice strong cafetier. And I have to have five on the strength scale, number five of proper coffee. And yeah, up and out and on the road. I think the first port of call, folks, is Kirkstone Pass this morning. Never done Kirkstone Pass. But I do hope to be able to pull, uh, I have got a route planned and I'll show you uh, from where I took that route when we pull up. I hope, I hope I can pull the uh, hard nut in as well. I'll get a chance. But I know I've got about a 180 mile, five and a half hour route planned. It's eight o'clock in the morning, we've got plenty of time, haven't we? Right then, so what we'll do, we'll uh, jump on Kirkstone Pass, find a place to pull up up there, take some photos. Never done Kirkstone Pass, and I've heard good things about it, so. Because I'm on my own, I can dick about as much as I want today. Oh, oh yes. Ventilation on this almost dead good as well. You've got two vents, you've got your bottom one here, and your top one on top of your head. I just leave that one open all the time to let uh, fresh air come into your top of your head, keep you cool. But this one's, this one's really good. It, uh, it directs air straight onto your face. Coming up the motorway, I just shut it it was getting a bit cold on me air on my face but like now you just want it open and it gives you a really nice breeze onto your face and although you've only got two um, switches top and bottom um, it looks like you don't have an exhaust port but you do the two vents at the, the two like, fins at the back are um, underneath their uh, exhaust ports so and what I really like about this helmet as well is the visor is dead easy to lift and the sun visor is mega. It comes all the way down, ready? Covers the whole, your whole view. Spot on it is. I wanna keep it up for a bit while they, while we're a bit overcast. If the sun comes out, I shall pop it down. But the reason I'm staying where I'm staying is uh, I was looking at this route last night that I will show you in a minute. Uh, and the route pretty much starts and finishes at this junction where I'm turning left in a minute. So it should be spot on. It'll be nice if I get the full route in today. 
180 miles. I don't think Hard Knock Pass is part of the route that I've got planned. Um, so maybe, depending on how far it is away from here, I don't think it's too far away. I might have to do that tomorrow before I leave. But I would like to do it. I've done Hard Knock quite a few times. The steepest road in the country. Bit of sunshine, folks. Bit of sunshine. Right, we're turning. Might be able to nip through here, actually. Zip through here onto the A592. I'm going to cheat and go straight through here. Alright, this should be the A592. Which is Kirkstone Pass. Let's enjoy Kirkstone Pass for the first time ever. In damp conditions. It might be time for some sun visor action. Yes, it is. Do you know, I've wanted to do Kirkstone Pass for years. I never, never got round to it. Because I've always had an agenda when we come to the lakes, you see. And today, I don't have any agenda apart from riding this beautiful VFR 800. Yeah, just for one night. It's going back next week, so I wanted to try and just put a few more miles on it. Liking this already. And it looks like I've almost got this place to myself. I think that's the beauty of uh, Lake District and for riding because it's such a popular tourist spot if you come here at weekends you're pretty much screwed but if you can if you can wangle a little midweek trip up here and in term time you'll find that you've got it pretty much to yourself this is wow this is lovely we are doing some climbing Great road this is. I want to pull up here. Quick stone in. this a sec because under here I have got that's another thing about this bike all you 6th gen owners will uh, love this because we have zero space under our seat but drop the key in there look a little twist pop the back end of the seat off and all we've got under here we've got bloody space to stick all sorts we'll sit over there 
switch that off and I'll leave it on. Let's go and sit down here a sec. Right, this book, I don't know if any of you are familiar with it. It's this. I've had this for years and I dug it out when I knew I wanted to get away for a couple of days with literally anywhere in mind, could have been north, south, wherever. Um, I dug this out because I thought, see if it gives me some inspiration. Anyway, this is probably, I don't know, seven year old or something. Anyway, it's well worth a buy, folks. It's an old one now, but it's well worth a buy if you, uh, if you want some inspiration. Uh, so, where are we? Okay. Um, I'd stop. Choose a. I like this version. Right, so I'm just going to chat back there. B5332 to Thermia. Let's carry on. Kirkstone Pass then. Go. Nine miles. Ooh. So this str this stretch of route that I've just programmed in will take us to the coast, which will be very nice. Lovely road this is. I we'll have to overtake this person when I can see a safe place to do so. Good. Oh dear. Oh dear me. Be a bit careful on here, you know, kids. It's very dangerous. We should just dry that little bit more. Just a little tiny bit damp. Oh, what a nice place to be at nine o'clock on a uh, Thursday morning. Ah, is this the beginning of all's water? I think it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, this is all's water. Oh, the gorgeous smell. I don't know what that is. Oh, what's that? Beautiful Lake District. What was that piece of um, trivia? I think I'm right in saying there's more water in Loch Ness than there is in the whole of the Lake District. Wowzers. Yeah. Roads are drying out nicely now. Some of them. It's weird how they're drying patches. Alright then, switching up here. Great run this is. Dockray, that's it, left to Dockray. Ambleside Loop. This one's definitely one for the books. Great roads, aren't they? Alright then, left here towards Keswick on the A66. Look at that in front, eh? The mirrors on this bike are lovely and all. Not only have they got the indicators and like running lights on the front, they just look 
real top notch. The arms themselves stay put and it's these that you move. But they're really nice, really nice touch that is. It's nice to be out on my own folks. Well, with you of course, but yeah. It's nice to be out on my own and not uh, looking for folks in my mirrors. So I think we're just gonna bypass Keswick at the moment. We're just heading towards Keswick, but instead of going directly through it, I think we're just gonna skip by the side of it. That's it, B5322 to Thirlmere. One of the, well, the first lake I ever camped at the side of, Thirlmere Lake. It is very smooth, this bike is. I've been doing a lot of Instagram posts and things with it and posting on our uh, Facebook and uh, I did also post one on the VFR 800 site and, uh, there was someone, there was a discussion about saying oh yeah I don't like it, why, why release one that's slower than the last one I'm like it's not slower than the last one, it might it, I think it's down on power or down on horsepower or something to the last one but I tell you now this is not slower than the last one I wouldn't say it's faster. I would say it's very, very, very almost identical. Well, there's things that are different, like this seems a lot smoother. The transition into VTEC is a lot smoother. But it behaves. The characteristics and everything are all the same. Just that it's got a few nice little, nice little uh, finishing touches to it that makes it makes it desirable. But yeah, I will hold my hand up and say um, when the day comes that mine is to be retired, which she isn't at the moment. She's had a nice little uh, break through summer while we've been uh, riding all these super new bikes. Got a nice little break, well deserved break, but uh, we're not hanging her gloves up yet. She's got loads left in her, loads left in her. She's probably got the same again in her. Anyway, I, I would be happy to have one of these actually. This, you know, the newer version. I weren't sure I was going to like it as much as mine. As you know, I hold mine on a pedestal, literally. She, she's got a. a, a a four inch carpeted pedestal that she sits on <laughs> anyway uh, yeah because I do genuinely love mine so much I was worried that this one wasn't gonna uh, match up nicely to it but the reason I like it so much is because it's very 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 similar I'm sure she'll growl lovely with a new a nice short stubby can on yeah, I'd be happy to own one of these. Maybe Honda should give me one, eh? For all the VFRs I've sold on my channel. <laughs> There's been one or two now, folks. One or two. And I still stand by it. Well, I've got to say, I'm loving. I'm loving this road. This loop so far. Oh, that would have been a great one to hit at speed. Woo! Jump, you'd have jumped that. Easy. Turning right onto the 591. Traversing across the countryside, you gotta love it. Keep forgetting uh, that this has got self cancellers on. That work seamlessly, may I add. Look at that. Riding this bike has only reaffirmed my love for the VFR. It is such a good such a good bike I'm trying to get some nice photography done today I feel I've not taken any decent photos in ages yeah we're just scouting around outskirts of Keswick now that's Keswick's down there I need to reference something as well the last couple of videos that have gone out uh, okay all being albeit on the Suzuki's and mostly on the GSXR which is a stupidly fast bike um, uh, the last couple of videos that I've been using this helmet set up with the GoPro on in front of my mouth and I've had a few comments of people being a bit disgruntled saying I'm riding far too fast and it's not like me and it's not wild bad well it is wild bad because it's me 
uh, and I'm not riding fast because Go the GoPro has a special field of view which is a really really wide field of view it makes everything look like it's going at warp speed it's not made to do that on purpose but it just it just makes it look like that but you've got a really 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 wide field of view which is what I like because you can see things you can see you can see more around you and I like it especially being able to see the bike and stuff in because it gives you more of more a sense of depth into your shot the subject is the road ahead I've said this before in terms of composition the subject is the road ahead but with a subject it's always nice or with a composition it's always nice to have a foreground as well whereas my other helmet uh, all right One second uh, my other helmet you've got no you've got no sense of depth at all because you can only see the road ahead you can't see anything else around me but given this given this in front of me now the foreground it gives the road and your subject and your composition depth that's why I like it but to be able to get all that in nice you have to have it on the super it's called super view on GoPro and it's just super wide it just makes everything look like it's going way faster than what it actually is so please please bear that in mind in fact there was a couple of bits on that last video where we got the little monkey bike and the little monkey bikes with me now you're not telling me I'm speeding and being ridiculous and riding like a knob I think somebody put um, when I've got a little 50cc Honda Dax at the side of me. No, I'm not. So just bear it in mind, please, folks, before you jump on the before you jump on the old keyboard. Little explanation of recent uh, videos. I've never ridden like an idiot. I never plan to ride like an idiot. I ride to see places, as you know. Ride to go and see places and enjoy being out in the countryside and we're exactly where we are now loaded with a camera loaded with a few cameras uh, to, to, to be able to create a little parcel of uh, goodness a little parcel of beauty I'm, I'm quite shocked as to what, how much stuff you can get in these panniers they're a lot lot a lot smaller than mine but with me in one pannier I've got my DSLR and my drone and my security chain and in the other pannier I've got my Converse, pair of socks, pair of boxers, pair of jeans, t-shirt, jacket, my charging board, my dark visor, uh, I think that's it. But I'm very surprised as to what I can squeeze into it. I think they're a lot deeper than what you expect them to be but it, I'm still, I'm still again because I'm used to mine, I'm, I'm still missing the top box and tank bag I was hoping that my tank bag ring for the tank lock would fit this one because it's Honda but it's not This is the, the, the fuel cap on, the, on this new 8th gen is a lot smaller in diameter than, than mine so without going and buying a, a a tank lock ring for it but I am missing the tank bag and I am missing the top box well folks whilst we're out we'll, we, sh we shall crack this bike's first thousandth mile first of very many let's hope here we've got a PCOS trip booked again with the team in a couple of weeks very much looking forward to that I'll be taking the Risha suit on that trip because because uh, we're getting slightly out of the season going to be a lot cooler should be a pleasure actually a bit of a drizzle again it said this on the on the on the weather app I use uh, AccuWeather it's a paid one I think but um, yeah it's, it seems to be very 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 accurate even down to the you know it'll say rain starting in 22 minutes and it's, it is pretty pretty close well, it's nearly 10 o'clock, folks. I'm getting ready for some brekkie. Silleth. Silloth? Silleth. It's 
time to go and find some coffee and some breakfast. Right, belly full of food and a beautiful coffee. Beautiful coffee, what do you think coming from that place? <laughs> I'm such a coffee snob. But coffee nonetheless. Next part of the route programmed in. This next stretch is about two and a half hours, I think. Let's go. <coughs> We go down this way. That's it. I can't make my mind up if this is a lovely, sleepy little town or a little bit of a dump. <coughs> I'm being a bit too harsh. That breakfast were lovely, actually. I just fancied a nice, proper coffee. Watch me find a dead nice one there somewhere. Oh, it's back to normal, look. Right, let's get back to the task at hand. Rrr, visor down, knuckle down, and shit out. I'm such a filth bag. I didn't brush my teeth this morning, so I left the house at. Oh, well, I. I, I walked out of the house into my garage at about half past four when uh, I didn't want to dis disturb anybody so I didn't brush my teeth and I've just had now a fry up on top of that doesn't feel good dirt bag well I'm loving this little solo trip out on me Todd minding my own business I'm missing lads though. <laughs> it's far too windy for drone, which is a massive, massive shame, but uh, we'll have to see what it's like later on. Might calm down a bit. Gans? Yep. See that little overtake? Not even in the VTEC, so perfectly gentlemanly. But I passed him and he thought, oh, what a gentleman. I'm talking some shit. I've got no one to talk to, have I? Now nah, lads aren't here, I've got no one to talk to. Looks a bit rough out there, doesn't it, this morning? This uh, morning, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Probably getting a bit delirious because I've been up since half four. So I wonder if I can tie in. Hard knot would go in back. I've got the wind ladder pass and honest to pass to do. <coughs> it's the day of the passes today. Kirkstone, Winlatter, Honister, and maybe Rhinos and Hardknot. Head closed. No access. Oh, sh see, shall we? Let's have a quick look what we've got here. Public right of way. It's nice, isn't it? That's nicer, though. Look at her, folks. Isn't she lovely? Hey. Oh, that's a photo, isn't it? Yes, it is, and it's going to. Then we'll have one.
Not the best time to stop, was it? <laughs> well, right, I don't know if you saw that earlier. The makeshift thing I had to do for me. Because it's an external charger on this lot. I had to put a bit of a bag over the connector to uh, help waterproof it. Well, let's do a job that will. No problem, Ray. Turned into Albie then, didn't I? It's lovely and smooth, this is. I made a mistake of leaving my visor open and all, Anna. Getting water on the inside. This is really nice. Steep as well. Blame Pedro. <laughs> ah, it's got to be open. No nuclear dump. We'll let it pass. See if I can get that visor to dry out a little bit. Any way of me squeezing past, I am squeezing past. Please let me get through. I've got two miles to go. tree cutters how closed is it don't make me go all that way back Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is, I think that's an alarm, isn't it, that goes off to warn people that you've come past it. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. I don't think I'd have got through there if uh, people were working there. But that would have caused me no end of grief if I could have not got through that. Well, thank you for leaving a tiny little bit of access for me. This is the A66 for one junction. Thank you. Thank you. Whew, that was lucky folks, weren't it? <laughs> I were a little bit worried. Yeah, our guys, the last time we came up here, mate, on the bikes, it was raining just as bad. <coughs> and we were soaked. <coughs> I remember turning up here absolutely soaked. It's getting a bit bleak up here. Pretty cool. Yeah, this is where we did the Vera Ferrata over there. There's like a, there's like a centre up there for it. That's great folks if you've never done it before, Via Ferrata. I don't know if you've ever heard of it or if you know what it is, but if you don't, it's uh, basically strap a load of carabiner clips to yourself and um, harnesses and then climb around the outside of, um, well anywhere really, but this is a big slate mine. And uh, yeah, you've got to climb tiny little 
I mean, li literally around the outside of the, of the rock face, two thousand feet up, whatever. But you're strapped on, so you can't you can't fall or anything. But it's, it's quite nerve wracking. It's good fun though. Physically demanding. Oh, this is where we parked up for it for the slate mine and you have to walk all the way up there you see that massive uh, trail all the way up there and then you climb around the outside of that it's proper yeah that massive trail up there the track you drive up there or you walk up that and then you're climbing around the outside of that and, and climbing up little ladders and stuff I forgot about this. Oh, what if I can get a photo? It's not really suitable, is it, to park? Drag it in a bit there. You've got like, you've got to climb this around the out, outer edge of it and up through the middle of it. And it was just the same weather as all when we last did it. And it was, um, it was quite scary. Not bloody good though. Yeah, I've got to have a picture of that, whether it's raining or not. It'll be interesting to see how this uh, GoPro copes in the rain actually because I've got the you get two skeleton cases with it one that's um, totally waterproof so you can go swimming and what have you dive in and that and the other one that's got well it's not it's just the skeleton case and it's just got an open back on it but it's better for sound and also I've had to drill a massive hole in the side of it for um, where are we drill a massive hole in the side of it there a lot to put the microphone in so essentially it ain't waterproof Woo. it's nice to do passes in this weather anyway it makes it more dramatic yeah there's caves and all that kind of stuff to climb in and to climb through Mirrors are mega on this bike, love them, really love them. What's well, going off here then? People who can't drive, look at the state of that. You've got tons of room there. You've got tons of room. You've got loads of room. Come this way, come this way. This way. You've got loads. You still got this much. <laughs> Jesus She's not going he's not going near the edge. Can I get a photo here? If I get that down there will that get back up? Maybe we won't I Thank <laughs> you. 
give me a round of applause for shifting them on. <laughs> oh, ah. Uh.